While I was looking through some of the safety issues on the Formbot Raptor 2 in the previous video, I found some issues with the x-axis that I thought could do with a bit of investigation and potentially a repair. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how I identified what the issues were and what I did to fix them. My thoughts were that maybe the bearings are damaged, so that would cause a kind of lumpy grinding movement, but it wasn't that noisy, so maybe not. Then I thought maybe the extrusion's damaged, so it's only aluminium, it can be dented and damaged fairly easily. Nothing was immediately visually obvious, but maybe I just wasn't looking quite in the right place. And my last thought was also that the wheels could be damaged. They are really plastic after all, so again, I needed to get a little bit of a closer look and see what was wrong. So looking a little bit closer, some damage is definitely visible on the extrusion itself. There's some cracking and by looks of it, missing material on the V-slot area and some small dents as well. Looking closer at the wheels, again, this wheel must have been one of the ones on the bottom because it wasn't immediately visible from the top and there is some quite serious damage. It looks almost like a cat has chewed it or something. I don't know really what's gone onto this wheel. It must have happened I don't know, it can't have happened during printing because that's not the kind of damage I'd expect to see from a print. The wheels do seem to spin fine though. Now I've got them off the extrusion, it's clear that rotating the wheel independently, the rotation is fine. So the bearings don't seem to have gone past their end of life. They seem to still be fine. So those are worth keeping. So for the new parts, I'm definitely gonna replace the extrusion and keep the damaged one for something structural only. Uh, I'm going to replace all of the wheels a, just to make sure that they're consistent, so that they're all the same, but I'll keep the rest as spares. So the wheels that I've got do need some assembly. Fitting the bearings into the wheels can be quite difficult. You need to make sure that they are totally concentric before pushing them in. If they go in at any sort of angle, they do just get jammed. So you really do have to be quite careful with this. While the bearings are currently mounted with M5 screws, I'd rather have used a shoulder bolt, so something with an outer diameter that matches that of the bearing a little bit closer, just because it prevents a little bit of slip, but hopefully the compression force that we've got here should prevent that anyway. When replacing the wheels on the carriage, it's important to get everything back in the right order. I find it helpful to disassemble it fairly slowly and carefully, put the parts in a line so that when I reassemble it, I just follow the line back and everything's back where it should be. If I was doing this build totally from scratch and this was my design, I'd actually want fewer spaces here to try and keep the carriage as close to the rail as possible but making any modifications at this point would just basically change more parts of the printer than I really want to modify. So I'm just gonna keep it as is and I think it'll be okay, just not perfect. You also probably noticed that the wheels are slightly different to the originals. The new ones have this kind of V-slot in the side whereas the original ones were flat. It's not gonna matter for this application, the loads are quite low, so this will just be fine. I don't think it's gonna make any difference at all. If you've not seen these before, these are eccentric nuts and are basically designed to allow for adjustment of the wheel position due to the fact that it forces them to not sit centrally in the hole on the plate. Rotation of the nut moves the rotational axis of the wheel closer to or further from the rail. I'll show you this in a second when we get to the adjustment at the end. Doing all four of these bearing wheels took a little while and was quite fiddly, but it was well worth doing now while the printer is in its current state. Now that everything's sort of sorted, it's time to put everything back together again. Hopefully with no spare screws left over.
These slot nuts can be quite frustrating to fit back into the extrusion, but some patience and repetition gets the job done eventually. Make sure to apply some tension to the belt when fitting the idler back in. Not too much, you don't want it to twang like a guitar string, just enough to remove any of the slack. So this is how the eccentric nuts work. You can see the rotation basically changes the distance to the rail. It's not a perfect system, but it's good enough for this sort of basic application. Well, that small repair did end up with me replacing quite a lot more than planned, didn't it? But anyway, at least it's done now, and I'm fairly happy with how it works. It's now really, really smooth and quiet, so that'll be great for getting an extrusion stuff set up onto it. Thank you very much to Oosnest for providing the extrusion and the wheels for this repair. You can check them out in the link in the description. So now that the x-axis is repaired, we're ready to start fitting an extruder to it but we obviously need an adapter. So in the next episode, I'm gonna give you a tutorial on how you can design an adapter for a Hemera extruder onto, well, this printer, but this same method will be suitable for really like any printer. So if you're looking to fit a Hemera or really many other extruders, then this simple guide in the next video will hopefully get you where you need to be. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.